Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all having a lovely evening. Today we are live from Austin, Texas, or maybe I'm just really good at using a green screen. You'll never know. So today I'd like to discuss a topic that I think most of the people here actually subscribe for, because let's be real, most of you are probably not here for motherboard repair, Apple repair, right to repair, New York real, or even New York real estate. It's probably because of the GameStop thing that happened last year, where this stock went from four to $13, all the way up to 100 to $300 for a short period of time, as a result of a Reddit Wall Street Bets inspired short squeeze. Now, when this happened, you had a lot of people up in arms as a result of the behavior of the CEO of the trading firm that was very popular, very popular brokers used by a lot of those users, which is Robinhood. They went up there and said that they did not have a liquidity problem right on CNBC. And I went over that in this video. For any of you who forgot this particular conversation, I'll just play it over again. But, but it, it sounds to me, though, that you're suggesting that there was a liquidity problem uh, inside the firm. And, and my question about that then raises all sorts of new questions about whether there's a systemic issue uh, underneath the system and underneath the company unto itself. No, no, there, there was no li liquidity problem. No, no, no there was no, no liquidity problem. That's exactly how people talk when they're not bullshitting you. I've had a business for 10 years. I have an idea when my vendors or my employees are bullshitting me. That is exactly what it sounds like. Now, the problem here is that if he had said he actually had a liquidity problem, people would not have jumped to conclusions about potential malice or potential conspiracy theories as to why this was going on, because this seemed very, very fishy at the time. The problem that we have here is that he wasn't honest. He could have just come out and said, we were having issues with the deposit requirements necessary in order to allow people to trade a very volatile stock that has gone up in price by you know 10 to 100 times over the course of a month or two as a result of a Reddit-inspired short squeeze and media attention. As a result of that, we had to stop allowing purchases of that stock for a day or two. Rather than do that, he came out and said that he didn't have a liquidity problem. Now, technically, technically, if we look at this through a very manipulative lens, what he said was correct. If I'm getting a call from my wife, and the moment I get the call from my wife, I take my dick out of the woman I'm cheating on my wife with, and my wife says, are you cheating on me right now? Technically, I can say not right now. Eight seconds ago I was, but right now I'm not. But obviously, that's not the question that's being asked. And if I answer the question in a way that's technically correct rather than morally correct, I'm kind of being a douchebag. And that's partially what happened here. And what I find interesting is this report that came out from the House Financial Services Committee. Or This is a very, very interesting report over here that goes over what happened in 2021. So it says over here, Robinhood asserted to the public and testified to the committee that the company was always comfortable with its liquidity leading up to historic trading restrictions. Despite the actions undertaken by Robinhood's executive leadership to respond to liquidity issues it faced in the days leading up to the meme stock market event. Now, if we scroll down in this particular document, you'll find the following. Because they did not model for excess capital premium charges, Robinhood therefore did not expect and had not arranged adequate funding for the additional $2.2 billion excess capital premium charge. On the morning of January 28, 2021, Jim Swartwout texted Gretchen Howard at 6.29 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, writing, and I quote, huge liquidity issue. Huge liquidity issue. When committee staff asked Jim Swartwout what he meant to convey by this early morning message, Swartwout commented that liquidity can mean different things in different contexts. In that case, he commented that he was concerned with Robin's ability to meet its collateral requirements at DTCC. When you say you have a liquidity problem, you have a money problem. That sounds like a money problem to me. Again, we're talking about straightforward answers to straightforward questions. The lesson to be learned here is that if you lie directly to the faces of your customers by being technically correct while simultaneously not answering the question that you know they're asking you, this will cause you massive reputational damage. You will lose a lot of trust. It is horrible PR for your firm. At the end of the day, everybody's gonna know that you were full of shit anyway, so it probably just makes sense to take your lumps up front and just be honest with people. I realize that, again, I can't pretend to be all things to all people at all times. I am human, and my company will have failings. And if you just come out and be honest about it, you have to believe that whatever it is that occurs is the best possible thing, rather than sounding like a weasel and bullshitting everybody. Now, over here, I find it interesting that the Robin Hood's counsel says, and I quote, the report corroborates the decisions and requests Robin Hood made and the waivers granted were generally the same decisions, requests, and waivers made and granted by others in the industry. Robin Hood remains confident that it took the appropriate and responsible steps necessary to protect and support our customers and has made improvements since okay but that doesn't actually answer the question you had a liquidity issue when asked point blank if you did have a liquidity issue 
you lied. Why? It's unnecessary. And I understand that people are going to say, well, listen, you don't want to say up front that your, your company has a liquidity issue because that could lower the value of your company, lower the value of everything else, it could spook investors. As if people weren't spooked enough when this happened at the end of January of last year. If you start a company, do me a favor. If you screw up, if you get things wrong, if you make a mistake, or even if you didn't make a mistake, but life just happens to steamroll you, show up, get in front of the microphone, collect yourself, breathe in, breathe out, and tell the truth. It's a difficult thing to do. You have to believe that if you tell the truth, that whatever winds up occurring, whatever people wind up thinking of you, that is the best possible thing that could have happened to you, and that's the best possible thing that those people could have thought of you. Because if you get out there and you lie so clearly where people can obviously tell from all walks of life that you're bullshitting them, it's probably not going to end well for you. And to be clear, here, it isn't even the case that it could be argued that they did everything correctly. It says over here, key finding number one, Robinhood exhibited troubling business practices, inadequate risk management, and a culture that prioritized growth above stability. A culture that prioritized growth above stability. Now, let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'm going to be doing a couple of maybe do, you know, one or two fan meet and greets while I'm in Austin, Texas for this particular conference that I'm going to. And, uh, you know, I'll announce it on my community page. So make sure to check out my community page if you're in the area. I don't exactly know what my schedule is going to be for everything while I'm here. So it's going to kind of be up in the air a little bit. That's about that. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.